Hi guys, welcome to my Lightroom library. This is where I store and catalog all the images that I shoot. Uh, there's a lot of different belief systems in how you should use Lightroom. Um, and you can make it really complicated with a lot of complicated folder structures and really advanced uh, labels like color labels, stars, uh, and keywords. But for me, I've taken a, a very simple approach to using Lightroom. Uh, and the purpose for me is just to very simply be able to find and recall the image I'm looking for inside of the 25,000 images I've got in my catalog. Uh, so I'll walk you through how I've set up both physically and logically my Lightroom, and hopefully it'll give you some, some ideas of how you could potentially set up yours. Alright, so first off, I store my Lightroom library on an external hard drive. That way I can switch between Macs very easily and still have access to the same library. Um, and if you look at the way I've structured it, so here I, I've got one external drive that's uh, only a terabyte in size that I I, uh, I call Lightroom Library. And then in there I have only one folder, and the folder's called Photography. And in that folder I keep two separate subfolders, one called Processed and one called Work in Process. So once images have been processed, they would get dropped into the Process folder. So within there, I have a few physical folders um, that I use, and the purpose is I just, a lot of times I like to just browse images, um, and I find just having it kind of broken up this way uh, works for me. So what I have is I have blog, which is where I store all of the images that go on to shoot Tokyo, or images that I shoot uh, for my photography hobby. I have Family, where I store all the family images that I take of my wife or my son or, or our extended families. Um, I have all the photos I've taken on my iPhone. Uh, and now I have an Android phone, so I need to get those into my library. Um, then I have projects. And I take projects and I just break them out separately because I don't want to flood my, my blog folder with all these images. So in here I've got like my $10 headshots. And I don't want to have to look at you know, all those headshots scattered throughout my, my other images. So it just makes it easier for me to navigate around. And then I've got some other projects, like the, Fu the shoot Fukushima project that I just finished. I keep, in the main folder, I keep the images that I ended up publishing on the blog. And then I also keep my rejected images, or images that I've, I didn't choose to use uh, in the posting. Because maybe the people I was working with on that project might want copies of those images. I have one from the project they did in Cambodia a few years ago. And then I actually did a commercial uh, project for Uniglo, uh, which is a big clothing company similar to The Gap uh, in Japan. So, um, so I keep those projects there just to kind of keep them out of the way of the rest of my images. Um, and then while I have it logically also broken up, um, I physically keep Shoot Tokyo the book and Shoot Tokyo the book bonus images uh, in separate folders. And I keep them up here just because I'm always referencing those images because they're my my most favorite images, so it's easier for me to have them uh, up in the top portion of the screen as opposed to down in the bottom portion of the screen. Um, and then what I have is, as you come down here, I've got work as well. And what I don't want to do is, I don't, you know, I take a lot of photos at work, but I don't want to mix those images into the rest of the uh, uh, the rest of my blog or my family images. So it just, it works to nice kind of segment them off or compartmentalize them off uh, into a physical folder. And then I have a work in process folder. So I've got images I haven't published in the blog yet. I have, uh, I have you know, some images of me shooting on the street that people have shot at me that I really like, uh, and I'm just waiting to use those on the blog. And then once I do, I'll, I'll then file them into the process folder. Uh, and then I have some working family images that I'm, I haven't finished either selecting or cataloging yet. So I tend to clean my images pretty well. Um, if I go out and shoot a few hundred images in a day, a few hundred images don't get into and stay in my Lightroom library. Um, I tend to call out uh, images that are not, uh, I think, at the right level. I know some people go out or shoot a thousand images in a day and add all of them to their, to their library. To me, that just it makes it too hard to, to, to follow and find and, and, and make Lightroom a useful place. So for me, it's really a place for finished images. Alright, so let's start talking about the logical part of Lightroom, how you can start setting up 
and finding things in Lightroom. So uh, the way I've organized my images is through a series of uh, color tags and keyword tags. And for color tags, I actually really only used three. I use green for processed. So once I've gone through and done any post-processing I'm going to do on an image, and once I've added keywords to the image, added copyright information, and I've, uh, I've sort of finished the image, I mark it as green. If that image is also one of my favorites for, mostly I use that for family, but if it's one of my favorites, then I mark it as blue. And if it's something that's been entered into my portfolio, meaning it's going to go on portfolio.shoottokyo.com, then I mark it as purple. So that's how I use color labels. Um, I don't use the ratings, so you'll see a lot of people use stars, so one star, two star, three star, four star, five stars. Um, I, I haven't quite figured out how to use that, so I don't. Um, and then I use keywords. And I've taken a very simple approach to keywords. And for keywords for me, again, it's to recall and find an image. Um, I know some people put hundreds of keywords per picture. To me, that becomes very complicated to find. Um, so if you look at like this picture of this geisha that I love, all right, um, I think this is one of my best images, so I've marked it as best. And I've got a couple hundred images that I've marked as best so I can find later. <coughs> Excuse me. I shot this image on film, and film doesn't have any of the metadata you get with digital images. So I've marked it as film, I've marked it as Leica M6, and I've marked, marked it as XTAR 100, which was the, or XTAR 100, which was the film I was using. And then I usually mark an image for the location, and then maybe something about the image. So in this case, it was Geisha, it was Gion, and then it was Kyoto. So that should kind of give me enough information to find it. Uh, additionally, this photo is, is in my Shoot Tokyo book, and it's, a, it's in my portfolio, and it's also available for sale as a print. So it's marked, it's also keyworded with portfolio, prints, and Shoot Tokyo book. Now this is uh, a pretty uh, advanced set of keywording, because it's kind of a pretty important picture. But if I was just taking a picture of a shrine in Jiugaoka, for example, it would likely be tagged with Jiugaoka shrine, and that's probably all it would get marked with. Um, and then if I'm looking for pictures of shrines, I would do a keyword search on shrine, or I'd do, do a keyword search on Jiugaoka, and then be able to kind of find my favorite images in Jiugaoka. All right, so let's look down at the collections part and this is where all the, the the real power of Lightroom comes in and this is where all the how you can start logically structuring and organizing your images and like I said having uh, my Lightroom clean and having a clean workspace is important to me so the first collection I have built is called clean data and what I use is I use this to make sure that everything has a color label has a keyword has copyright information so now I know that the images that are in my Lightroom are clean and then I have structures for folder structures for, or uh, sorry, collection structures for my family, so I can see my images from uh, each of the years. Um, I've got this grouped together because this is I didn't necessarily have every year um, marked. That not all the photos did that back in 2003, um, but all these images are you know sort of my my favorite family ones. And then I have one called family album, and that's where I put my favorite. Uh, images from my family, which I call family album. And those are kind of the ones I always want to like, look back and remember. So I'm kind of looking back and, you know, trying to, you know, think about, you know, times with my family or, you know, when I'm traveling, it's a really good one to look at. Um, and then I have family favorites. And what I've done is I've, I've sort of structured my absolute favorite images of my family. And, and I've done it kind of this way. So here's my sort of, you know, my favorite images of myself, the, you know, that I can use for different posts or things. Uh, my favorite images of my son, my favorite images of me and my son together, my favorite images of my wife, my favorite images of my wife and I, my favorite images of my wife and my son, my favorite images of the three of us together, my, and my favorite pictures of my mom and dad. So again, it just makes it a really easy way to find the images I, I, I want to I view. Um, and I, I was learning a lot about film over the last couple of years, so I've built some structures to go ahead and look at film. And you can see this, you know, you quickly see this some kind of prevalent films for me, right? I'm a big shooter of Ektar, that was all when I was in Kyoto. So this image itself was shot on, on Ektar. Uh, and then uh, Pocha has sort of become my 
my standout film. So that's one that I, I tend to use all the time. So again, it just helps me to structure and find images very easily. Um, and then I've got a couple other folders that I really like, right? I've got what I call best, which are, these are my absolute best images when you know somebody says, you know, can I see some of your work? This would be a folder I would show them. Um, then I also just have another folder called best, but not in the book. So this is where like the power of, of, of the logical structuring of, of Lightroom is really good, right? Because you can just add a lot of exclusions. So in this case, it was like, I think the setup for this image is, uh, or for this catalog is, show me all keywords, or show me all images that have the keyword best in it, but does not contain the word shoot Tokyo book. And then you can kind of, you can see the power of this and how you can kind of include or exclude certain things to, to filter things in or out of your collection. Um, and then I'm doing an ongoing series right now called Open Train Door, where I'm shooting, um, you know, the train door ju either just as it's opening or maybe a few minutes, a few seconds before it's closing. Um, and then lastly, I have Shoot Tokyo the Book is the other one. So I can, again, that's something I look at quite often, so I've got the structure here. Um, I hope this is an interesting insight to kind of how I manage my Lightroom catalog. Uh, it works really well for me. Um, I hope it's something that, that works well for you guys as well. Uh, I, I, and I guess one of the last thing I do is I try to personalize my space a little bit. So you can uh, change your, your identity plate here. So I've been able to put a, a Shoot Tokyo identity plate here. I'm also able to change the font so they match my Shoot Tokyo font, which I think is kind of cool. Um, now I spend a lot of time in here, so it makes it a nice personal workspace. Uh, so good luck. I hope it, uh, it works well for you as well. All right, and my next video, I'm going to make a video on processing um, my uh, monochrome images and show you how I kind of get the look I'm, I'm, uh, I'm achieving with it. So thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed this video.